Well, uh, I'll use the adjective interesting. That was an interesting game. So it was, it was, it, I'm so happy we won that game. I, it, we, I don't think we played very well, uh, uh, particularly in the first half. Um, and I'll take the blame for that. I've got to get our team more uh, ready to play at the beginning of the game. I thought we were a little too careless, a little too lackadaisical at the beginning of the game, a little too um, laissez-faire, whatever. But um, I really like that second half with the, with the freshmen giving us some really good minutes and getting some good experience in there. So with that, I'll open it up uh, for questions. Yeah, it was it was great that he was able to have a career day, and we needed somebody to step up there. And uh, Roberto answered the challenge. I know at at, uh, at halftime, I really got into the guys about being prepared and and stepping up for each other when guys aren't playing well. And Roberto came out in that second half, and it was just tremendous. Um, and we needed every single point. Yeah, there's a couple of things. He's absolutely right. Our post play has been terrific, which is making our inside out stuff easier for the for the guards. Uh, but I think what he's doing is instead of uh, trying to dictate the game, he's letting the game come to him. And, and he's a terrific basketball player. And the really good players just sort of react to whatever's going on out there. So I don't know if he's more relaxed or if he's just used to playing uh, uh, the way we're playing. But, you know, if I had to, to if, if you put a, uh, um, if I had to make a, a, a guess, it would be that he's just letting the game come to him and he's not trying to force it. When he doesn't force it, he gets so much more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I better I better say that there was a gentleman's bet because I'm sure that if we were betting for real, we would probably get in the trouble. But there was a gentleman's bet that he couldn't get a 3.0 uh, for the quarter. And uh, if you guys know Roberto like I do, that's how you motivate him. If you make everything a competition, then he thrives. And um, Part of the reason why he's playing well is because he's doing extremely well in school. I, I, I know those things are co connected, uh, um, but he's, uh, he's also given himself over. I mean, that's a term you've heard us use before. He's trusting what we have to say and what we have to offer as a staff, and he's, letting, he's really letting us coach him. 100 push-ups for the bet? The gentleman's bet? No, no, no. It was uh, that it, it it wasn't a hundred push-ups, but I'm not gonna say what the stakes were. It just just friendly stakes. <laughs> Uh, uh, our team? No, no. I thought Chicago State did a terrific job being ready to play a high major team. I thought we didn't do a, a good job preparing to be that high major team who's getting a, a team that's uh, a mid-major coming into town hungry. I think there were a few, a, a few instances where we thought this was going to be an easy game. We, don't have to, we, can, we can show up half the time. And again, I say I'm, I'm taking full blame for that. And, and, uh, but the physicality, I don't think that was it because actually we got them in foul trouble. Um, so we were, we were handling that okay. I just think that mentally and emotionally, we came out slow. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think he is, um, he's, 
a natural scorer. I'll stay, say that first and foremost. He's a natural scorer, and there's, there isn't a whole lot that you can teach him about scoring. All we try and do is put him in a better position to score, and then we try and put him in a state of mind where he doesn't feel like every single time down he's got to make something happen. Sometimes the best play is to pass it and cut through and then live to fight another day. Uh, and I think he's starting, he's starting to understand that, and he's starting to accept it. As he always understood it. He's got a great basketball mind, but I think he's starting to accept it. Yeah. Uh, his schoolwork has gotten better too. So um, I, I, for that'll be the first thing I attribute it to. Uh, the second thing is, I. I really feel that Devon does better when he can kind of see what kind of game is going on before he gets in. So I think coming off the bench is helping him. He may disagree, but when you're as prolific in the low post as Devon is, if, you, if he's starting the game from this jump street, he's double teamed, triple teamed. If he's coming off the bench, there have been some other guys who've gotten going, so he doesn't have to go right away. And the, then he can kind of wait and pick and choose his spot. So I think it's just, it's been easier for him to score coming off the bench. Yeah, yeah. It, it, not as much as the one that Eric missed. That really gave me a scare. Um, but uh, yeah, when he came down funny like that, I, th I was thinking, ah, I hope it's not his knee. But uh, I think he hurt the bottom of his foot, and he seemed fine in the second half. And you mentioned the, the Alcides who were with the pressure coming into the good minutes. Uh, can you point out specifically? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, all of them ha did, did something positive. Uh, I was really happy that Jamal was able to get some real good minutes because, you know, we start him for defensive purposes, and then once we get going, it's hard for him to get back on the court because we have so many guys who are putting the ball in the basket. But... Uh, he was able to get out there and show that he's got a, a high basketball IQ. He was playing a lot of minutes in some critical spots, taking the ball out for us and making some really good passes. Uh, I thought Langston Morris Walker uh, made some strides today. He's a guy who's able to defend. He's just got to get used to um, making the right decisions on the offensive end. Uh, Olaf. I mean, that's a kid you can put in. I mean, when you can shoot the ball the way he shoots, he can get on the floor because of his offense. I want him to be able to stay out there because of his defense. So that was uh, um, – so he's got to work on that. But it was good to give him some minutes. And then Victor, Victor Robbins, who I think has been the slowest to get time, but I think eventually might be the one to thrive the most. Um, he's – it was it was nice – for him to, to get the amount of minutes he did and do some positive things and have some time to mess up, come out, go back in. You don't get that kind of experience um, during the conference season. So to get some of that now before we get to the conference season is very important. That's it? That it? Great. Thank you very much.